nearly stabbed it off man. Fish in the spot with lures So I'm sat under a shelter at home because that's right, yes, it's raining again. And that's kind of the theme of this video. Um, we're fishing for perch again with lures, and I want to explore what we can do um, when we want to fish the river. It's not looking perfect. The water's colored because of the flood water. And like I say, yeah, I just want to explore what we might be able to do to combat those sort of conditions. In the last perch fishing video, um, we managed to catch a few fish, which is great, on the reggies. Um, it became apparent quite quickly after another couple of sessions that those fish had unfortunately moved on, as they do. Um, and so I decided to take the opportunity to stretch my legs and that's when I visited the Thames uh, and we caught some perch and pike there before moving into the Lee Valley and catching some nice pike there as well. But we are now back onto the perch and this time we managed to find the perch a little bit more quickly than last time and we found them in a, in a more urban type of environment. So we're out and we're fishing. Wind's quite bad, so apologies if that's messing up the mic. Um, I feel a little bit of a phony because actually the water's not too bad. Um, it's um, it's not that it's not that coloured actually. The the colour is dropping out of it quite quick. We had a lot of rain. Uh, about, I don't know, two days ago. I could say it's, it's not actually that bad. So I don't want a lot of comments from people saying that wasn't flood water. Um, I can still show you the principles, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly got a reasonable amount of color in it. Um, give it another couple of days and I'm sure it will be fine and back to normal. But then, of course, the cycle might begin again. Just get another shed load of rain, which is forecast for another day or two's time. And that's why, why I've decided to do this video. I guess that could be the, uh, one fairly sound bit of advice is to know your river and know what parts of the river get affected by the floods more than others. Uh, some of it clears up quicker than other parts, like the main river um, struggles to recover. But the, some of the tribute trees in the back has actually bounced back quite quick. I've got a Reggie on there at the moment. Um, in terms of lure colours, that's an obvious thing to sort of talk about, I guess. And I, oh, no, weed. And I tend to go for either light, really light or really dark. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but the obvious thing to do, I suppose, is go for really bright lures when the water's coloured, which I don't tend to do. What I tend to do is go either light, really light or really dark. So that's like either uh, yeah, white or, or, or dark, very dark sort of nearly black lures. Um, I, I just basically avoid those sort of mid-tones in terms of colour. So yeah, I'm fishing a Texas rig with a twist so I can get those components making some noise and I'll take you through that. Um, it's got a little bit of a twist in that I've put an extra float stop on it so that I can turn the tex Texas rig into a Carolina rig um, just by moving the stops around and I'll, I'll show you that. Um, but yeah, it's nothing, nothing that revolutionary, just, just something that I'm, I'm playing around with 
the main thing is to get those sort of like components, the glass bead and the tungsten Texas weight, bring those into play to make some noise in the colour water. I suppose my retrieve does is still dictated by the general conditions in terms of whether it's warm or cold. And if it's cold, I'll go slower, you know. So if I am fishing Texas rig style with these glass components or glass and tungsten components, I am maybe utilizing the rod tip a little bit more to try and get those components sort of smacking together. And you can actually feel it through the rod. It's amazing, really. You can feel those components clicking together. It doesn't fill you with confidence, does it, color water? I would definitely rather fish it when it was foot work well it's falling rather than rising. I still, <laughs> I still think that if it's if it's rising, I I would probably go onto the lakes and do something else rather than on the river. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get out there sooner when it's falling. You know, so almost as soon as it's <laughs> just gone past the ebb, you know, it's not rising anymore and it's just starting to drop. I want to start fishing then. I don't want to have to wait for it to clear up completely. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm looking to do. It's what I'm exploring. I know you can get sort of flood charts and stuff like that online. People go to websites, you know, you can get information about your local river in terms of the river levels. Uh, I, I don't tend to do that uh, because I go fishing when I can go fishing, if that makes sense, you know. Uh, it's not it's not gauged by anything really other than you know my fishing sort of fits around my life and, and it's it's my life that dictates when I can go not nothing else really and if I get an opportunity I go there you go there's the rig I'll give you a better look later on dark lure um, and the float stops in there which is a weird place to have it on a Texas rig <laughs> Um, but I'll explain that later on and then I've got another float stop sort of higher up about there and I can slide that back and forth so yeah it's sort of an adjustable rig that's what I'm trying to achieve just trying out the Carolina rig yeah it's a good one don't stab it nearly stabbed it off there this one you're in. Whoa. 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 Well, we've been playing around with rigs in the cold water, in the coloured water, and there we are. Look at that fella. First frost, it feels like, of the year. Really quite a cold one, hence the woolly hat. Three pounds, three ounce. Fantastic. What a fish. So let's have a quick look at the rig. Um, I've moved away from my uh, beloved Cheb rig, which I use most of the time, to be honest. Uh, and I am using the Texas rig uh, when the water's got a bit of color in it. It's the Texas rig with a little bit of a twist. You know, it's nothing that revolutionary, to be honest. Let's, let's just go through it, though, from top to bottom. The first thing that I've got there, the first thing that I put on the line is a, is a sinker. Uh, then it comes down to a Texas weight then a glass bead, and then this is the bit that's a little bit of a twist. It's another sinker, and then we come into a weedless hook, and there you can see on it I've got I've got a creature bait. So the main components there that I, I'm you know that are important to me are the tungsten Texas weight and the glass bead. Uh, now um, I'm using those over the Cheb rig really so that I can create some noise in the coloured water that you know and that is the the key thing and the way that I'll fish it I'll fish it with yeah long pauses still especially as it gets cold you know if you've got cold uh, coloured water 
Um, lots of pauses, but then when I sort of like move it, I think I'll be using the rod tip a little bit more than normal just to try and shake some life into those rattly components. Typically people like the, uh, the Texas format um, for a couple of reasons, because we can get a rattle in the components, but also because you haven't got any weight underneath the lure. Uh, and I think when a perch comes to get it, I think when they hit the lure, they slightly inhale as well. And this, this idea that you've got no weight underneath the, the, the lure sometimes can help with your hooking properties because there's no resistance when they, when they take the lure. Most of the time I will fish the rig in, in this state, in a sort of Texas fashion. But, but the reason I've got the sinkers is that what I can do, say with this top sinker, I can pull that down and then I can lock everything into place. That's really good if I'm wanting to fish almost Ned style. And you know, I've locked everything down that end and I'm fishing really quite static. I'm not really utilizing the rattle from the components there from the bead, um, but I can lock it all down and fish Ned style if I want. Let me take the top, top sinker and move it right up out of the way. And what I'm able to do is take the bottom sinker and actually move that up the line by, you know, as much as I want to, maybe a foot or so. And now I've turned the rig into a Carolina rig. And the beauty of the Carolina rig is really this slow sinking effect that you get by moving the, the weight uh, away from the lure. Uh, and the way that I would fish that is long pulls up on the rod um, and then just letting it sink slowly in the water. So really by utilizing two sinkers, I feel like I've got an adjustable rig, you know, sort of three rigs in one almost. They're all pushed to the bottom. I've got myself something that sort of resembles the Cheb rig. If I pull the top sinker out slightly, I've got myself a Texas rig uh, with the ability to make lots and lots of noise with those components there. And then if I pull those sinkers out like that, I've got a Carolina rig. Uh, but there is something that you've got to consider when you're fishing, particularly in that Carolina rig format, which I'll take you through now. Some of the lures that we're using are buoyant. Okay, um, so that would include like the Reggies or the Squirms and some other, other lures that are on the market. Well, of course, you don't want to end up fishing <laughs> um, creature zig rigs, do you? Right up in the air like this off, off of a Carolina rig. What I tend to do is sacrifice the weedless presentation. I'll go for straight hooks. And I found these long shank hooks that are actually for fly fishing. Uh, so they're like a carp fishing long shank, but a thinner wire. I don't want a really thick wire on them. So that's what they look like. And onto those, I am putting a small tungsten weight, uh, like so. And then I'm threading my lure, uh, whether it's a creature bait or a squirm or whatever. That fish was actually on a squirm using this method. And there now you've got a creature bait on that long shank hook with a small tungsten bead, and I know that's critically balanced. You know, that'll just fall slowly in the water on the Carolina rig, um, really, really slowly. One thing that I was thinking with this is that you could almost use it as, I don't know, like prototype in the three rigs. You chuck it in and it's not perfect. It's not, it's not tied up perfectly, but it's, it's quite a good way for just getting a feel for how they want it, you know? So if you fished it Ned rig style, and you were getting more hits on the Ned Rig, then you might tie up a proper Ned Rig. If you were getting more hits on a, on a Carolina type setup on the drop, then you might tie up a proper Carolina Rig, you know. Um, uh, by that I mean, you know, adding a swivel and a lighter hook length uh, into the rig. Um, so, you know, tying it properly. But this could be quite a good, quick sort of way of getting a feel for how they want it. But, Again, I'm not usually one to mess around with rigs that much. You probably will see me using the Cheb rig more than any other. Um, the only thing that I'm trying to do here is introduce noise into my rigs and just try and think slightly outside the box in terms of what I can do when I'm, you know, when I'm waiting for the flood water to recover. I might be able to get there, get out there quicker after, after a bad flood. So let me know what you think. Is it madness? Am I overthinking things? Have you got a better way of doing this? Uh, just, just, yeah, let me know. So that's enough about rigs. Let's now have a look to see exactly what happened when I went back to that spot at dusk.
tungsten weight, Carolina style. The idea being that I can sort of twitch it, lift it up, and the worm will fall really slow. It's almost like drop shotting with worms, but almost in reverse. <laughs> so nothing on the Carolina or Texas rig. What we're gonna try now is the drop shot. And it's a drop shot, um, wacky hooked worm uh, that's been boosted. And I'll take you through uh, boosting, boosting lures with scent in a bit, but that's what we're getting in with. So, in my drop shot video, I did mention fishing rubber worms, wacky style. And that's what we're fishing now. Thing is, is they only just about sink, these worm, worms. I don't know if you can see it. On the drop shot. Absolutely slammed it. The wacky worm. There he is. Absolutely slammed it. Fishing this spot with lures. There he is, he's in. <laughs> oh, it's the second I've had from this spot. They're obviously here. Oh, found them and now Finesse is picking up a few. Love it. And we've got another one at dusk. Unbelievable, look at that. Uh, bang on three pound, this one. Just fish close in with uh, the drop shot and a, a wacky hook worm. Let it fall really slowly and he absolutely slammed it. Really did. What a fish. Well happy. So another result there. Right, there's just a couple more things I want to share with you. I'm aware that this one's been quite riggy. You'll have to let me know if you like that format or whether it's got a bit too technical and a bit boring in the middle, but let me know. What I was wanting to share with you, yeah, it's just two more things. One of these glass rattles that I've started to play around with. I've got a creature bait here that I've just slowly sort of like started. You can see I've started to insert a little glass rattle inside it there and you can mold it away like that and then you end up having a rattling soft plastic so if i hold it to my mic there you should be able to hear that rattling so yeah there we've got uh, a nimble which is now loaded with a glass rattle so i'm going to be giving that a go the other thing that I want to share is scent and adding a scent to the lures. Now, it's not unusual when you buy lures for them to already be in an in a oil uh, that gives them a slight scent, but you can boost this. And that second fish that I had was on a boosted worm on the drop shot. So um, it, was, it was one of the squirrel tails and I've got it in this pack. You can see it's an old Reggie pack and I've got a variety of lures in there actually. I've got um, some creature baits, I've got some sort of rubber worms and I've got a variety of things. And I just take the oil, this is anchovy oil that I've purchased, and I just give it a little bit of a squirt in there, reseal it, just give it a squeeze around and then just leave it. I've done the same with um, an assortment of squirms that are in that packet. And I've got a variety of Reggie's in that packet and I've done exactly the same with those. They're all boosted with oils. And I think this makes a difference in coloured water. You know, when visibility is low and they can't see the lures, playing around with noise and playing around with smell might get us the bites that we're after in those tough conditions. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Until the next one, look after yourselves and be lucky.